In this video, you're going to take a look at how to use the animation controller to create custom animations, how to use the animation controller to control staggered animations. The animation controller class gives you increased flexibility in animation. The animation can be played forward or reverse, and you can stop it. The animation controller class produces linear values for a given duration, and it tries to display a new frame at around 60 frames per second. The animation controller class needs a take a provider class by passing the vsync argument in the constructor. The vsync prevents off screen animations from consuming unnecessary resources. If the animation needs only one animation controller, use single taker provider state mixin. If the animation needs multiple animation controllers, use taker provider state mixin. The ticker class is driven by the schedule binding dot schedule frame callback reporting once per animation frame. It is trying to sync the animation to be as smooth as possible. The animation controller class at first can seem complex to use because of the different classes needed. Now the following are basic steps that you can take to create a custom animation or multiple animations running at the same time. First, add animation controller. Second, add animation. Third, initiate animation controller with a duration. Fourth, initiate animation with a tween with a begin and end values and chain the animate method with a curved animation. Now, for our example, use the animated builder with animation using a container with a balloon to start the animation by calling the animation controller dot forward and reverse to run the animation backwards. Now, the animated builder widget is used to create a widget that performs a reusable animation. Now, as you can see, once you break down the steps, it becomes more manageable and less complicated. A staggered animation triggers visual changes in sequential order. The animation changes can occur one after the other. They can have gaps without animations and overlap each other. One animation controller class controls multiple animation objects that specify the animation in a timeline using the interval. Now you'll walk through an example of using one animation controller class and the interval curve property to start different animations at different times. A staggered animation uses interval to begin and end animation sequentially or to overlap one another. The project's home page has the default scaffold with an app bar. And for the body, we're using a safe area with a padding of eight pixels all around. And for the child, the animated balloon widget is being passed, which is a custom stateful widget class to handle the animation. Now, declaring single taker provider state mix into the animated balloon widget class allows you to set the animation controller vsync argument. The single ticker provider state mix in allows only one animation controller. And you add the animation controller and declare the controller variable to animate both the floating upward or downward and the inflation or deflation of the balloon. As you can see, we're also declaring here two different animation, the animation float up and the animation growing size variable. And we also declare the balloon height, the balloon width, and the balloon bottom location. Now in the init state, we initiate the animation controller with a duration of four seconds. And for the vsync argument, it passes this, meaning the animated balloon state class. Now in the did change dependencies, we're going to declare that the balloon height is going to be the height of the device divided by two, in other words, half of the device height. For the balloon width, we're going to take the height and take a third of it. For the balloon uh, bottom location variable, we're going to take the height of the device minus the balloon height. Now, these numbers you can change to whatever you like. That's what I chose. Now, you declare 
the animation float up variable to hold the value from the tween animation to show the balloon either floating upwards or downwards by setting the top margin of the container widget. Now you also declare the animation grow size uh, to hold the value from the tween animation to show the balloon either inflating or deflating by setting the width value of the container widget. Now let's take at the animation float up. We initiate it with a tween, and the begin value is the balloon's bottom location, where we want it to start from the bottom of the screen. And for now, it ends at zero. Now we animate a curved animation, and by passing the parent is the animation controller. For the curve, we use an interval that starts from zero to one, which means the floating up animation is from, from the bottom of the screen all the way to the top, you know, all at once. But for the animation grow in size, for the tween, we begin at 50 pixels, which is the width of our container that we want to animate here. And we want it to end it at the balloon width as it starts small and it grows in size, so the width gets bigger. For the curved animation, the interval we want to also start at zero as we're starting at the bottom, but we want to finish the growing size before it reaches the top of the screen. So the interval starts at zero, but it ends at three quarters of the way. And for both animations, for the floating up, I'm using the curves fast out, slow in. And for the growing size animation, I'm using the elastic in and out. And you can use different, of course, curves to your liking. Now, it's also checking when the program first starts and the page start first runs and the animation is running. It says, hey, is this controller completed? If it is, reverse and, you know, full bottom down. If not, this is the first time. Tell the animation controller to go forward so that it starts the balloon animation to go up. As uh, good citizens on our dispose method here, we want to make sure that we dispose the animation controller. Now, let's take a look at the uh, animated builder constructor. It takes an animation, which is the animation float up. And for the builder, we're returning a container. And we want to animate the margins. So we're taking the top and the left margins and using the animation up value. So it shows the balloon floating up. And for the left margin, we want to say, hey, is the animation grows in size, make the left margin only a quarter of the width. Now, of course, you can play with these numbers. And the width of the container, let it be the animation grow in size. Now, the animated builder's child is a gesture detector, which is a child is showing the balloon as the image. Now, the balloon height and width are equaling the balloon height and balloon width variables. Now, when the tap, the when you tap on the gesture detector, it's saying, hey, where are we in this animation? Is the animation completed? That means, is it on the top already? Does the balloon float it up? If it is, it'll run the controller reverse. If not, if this is the first time we're tapping on it, the controller will click the forward. So let's try that. Let's click on the balloon, and it should do the controller forward animation. As you can see, it floated up. Then I started to go really quick, and then it just continued to float up. Now, if I tap on the balloon, it starts deflating, it starts growing in size, and then poof, it floats down to the bottom. Now, since we are using the, the change dependencies, if let's say we want to rotate the device, it would automatically run, resize to the screen width and height, which is now in landscape, and continue the animations. As you can see, now I tap on the balloon and it goes down and the balloon knows how to resize itself. And as I turn the, the device again in portrait mode, you can see the balloon, the animation starts automatically. And if I tap on it again, the animation goes in reverse. Just to see what's going on, let's take it to the uh, container. And let's take a, let's put in a color to the container and let's give it a color of maybe a, a light blue and let's just say a shade of a hundred. And as I save this, as you can see, 
the containers now has that color, that light blue shade 100. When you tap on it, you can see how the container is being animated and the image is also being animated with the height of the balloon and the width of the balloon. And as you tap on it, you can see the container shrinks, the image shrinks. So it kind of gives you an idea of what is happening here in the uh, animation. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and take that color out. But you can go ahead and play with the project and you can experiment on all different ways that you can make these different animations. How does it work? Declaring single ticker provider state mixin to the animated balloon widget class allows you to set the animation controller vsync argument. The single ticker provider state mixin allows only one animation controller. You added animation controller and declared the controller variable to animate both the floating upwards or downwards and the inflation or deflation of the balloon. You declared the animation float up variable to hold the value from the tween animation to show the balloon either floating upward or downward by setting the top margin of the container widget. You also declared the animation grow size variable to hold the value from the tween animation to show the balloon either inflating or deflating by setting the width value of the container widget. The animated builder constructor takes animation, builder, and child arguments. Next, you pass the animation float up animation to the animated builder constructor. The animated builder argument returns a container widget with the child as an image wrapped in a gesture detector widget. You used one animation controller class with multiple animation classes to create staggered animations.